In this video, I'm going to be covering everything you need to know about mortality profit from contingencies in actuarial mathematics. So let's start with something that we're familiar with, recursive reserves. So the recursive reserve formula is the reserves at time t plus the premium accumulated for one year should equal to the reserves at time t plus 1 plus qx plus t times by s minus t plus 1 v. Okay, so in the previous video I explained that to understand this what we think of is the reserves that we held at the beginning of the year plus the income that we received on that year accumulated for a year should equal to the amount that we'll need to hold at the end of the year plus this expected death strain. So this here is my expected death strain and this here is my death strain at risk and I'll explain both of these concepts in a moment so basically what we're saying is this accumulated value should cover the reserves plus this extra amount that we'll need if this person dies above the reserves okay so ex death strain at risk then is the actual amount that the insurer will have to pay above what he has reserved for this policy or above what he holds in reserves at time t plus one so it's s being the sum assured then so he will have to pay s if this person dies in the year but because he has reserves of t plus one v in in size he only has to cough up an extra s minus t plus one v so that's the death strain at risk so we think of it death because he pays this if the person dies, strain because it's a financial strain, and at risk because it's a risk that he's going to have to pay this extra amount. So then the expected death strain is this death strain at risk, or at least the expected death strain per policy is this death strain at risk multiplied by the probability that the life dies, okay, aged x plus t, so in the year t2, t plus 1. Okay, now death strain at risk actually comes from the concept of death strain. So death strain is equal to zero if the life survives to t plus one, or it's equal to s minus t plus one v if the life dies in year t t plus one okay so a lot of your textbooks or the acted notes if you have those or whatever notes that you've been given will probably say to you that the maximum death strain is equal to the death strain at risk okay so what they are saying then is that the maximum of those two values will be equal to the death strain at risk now what that implies then if the death strain at risk is equal to this amount, which is this line here, then it's saying that this is greater than zero. So it's saying that your death strain at risk is greater than zero. Now this is misleading because it is possible that your death strain at risk be negative. Okay, and so don't, don't just assume that because all your textbooks say maximum death strain is called the death strain at risk, that now your death strain at risk must be positive. It's not necessarily the case, and in fact, I'll show you an instance later in this video where your death strain at risk can and will be negative. Okay, so then the way that I like to interpret it is instead of thinking death strain at risk is the maximum death strain, I think death strain at risk is the amount if the life dies. Okay, is the death strain if the life dies. That's what I think of death strain at risk. Okay. So we've covered death strain at risk, we've covered this recursive reserves and the relationship of death strain at risk to recursive reserves and expected death strain. Now let's talk about actual death strain. So this is the expected death strain for an individual policy. Now the actual death strain for an individual policy will be equal to zero if the life survives to t plus 1 
an s minus t plus 1 v if the life dies in the year. So the actual death strain will equal to the death strain for an individual policy. Okay, now mortality profit for an individual policy then, and there's a reason why I'm emphasizing individual policy, mortality profit for an individual policy will be equal to my expected death strain, which is this here, minus my actual death strain. Okay, so let's understand this. Let's understand why this represents a mortality profit. So quickly note that mortality profit is not the same as a financial profit. Okay, and also just one thing I've just remembered that please, please be sure that when you're calculating death strain at risk, you're using the reserve at the end of the year, okay, not at the beginning of the year. Please just make sure that you do that because it's a very easy mistake to make. Okay, so mortality profit, let's understand it. So it's the expected death strain minus my actual death strain. So my expected death strain is interpreted as this amount that the insurer is expecting to pay above and beyond what they have, res what they have in reserves at the end of the year if a policy holder were to die in the year, okay? Now, my actual death strain is the actual amount that they have to pay in above and beyond that, okay? Above and not when I say that, not that the expected death strain. Actual death strain is above and beyond the reserves that I have in store at the end of the year. So above and beyond that is my actual death strain. Now, the difference between the two arises from my expected policy behavior versus my actual policy behavior. So if it turns out that fewer people die than expected, then it means that my actual death strain will be smaller than my expected death strain. And that means I'm making a mortality profit because I don't have to pay out as much as I was expecting. Okay, so that's mortality profit. And mortality profit for an individual policy is the expected death strain for an individual policy minus the actual death strain for an individual policy. But oftentimes you'll have to calculate the mortality profit on a book of policies, okay? So what you then need is the total expected death strain minus the actual, minus the total actual death strain. Now, the total expected death strain equals to your expected death strain times by the number of policies that were in force at the beginning of the year, or it can equal to the death strain, the total death strain at risk, which is just equal to this times by the total number of policies at the beginning of the year, and then times by QX plus T. So either way, you're multiplying death strain at risk times by the probability of dying in the year times by the number of policies that were in force at time T. Okay, so that's my total expected death strain. My total actual death strain equals to my death strain at risk times by the number of policies that died within the year, number of policyholders that died within the year. Okay, and then mortality profit then for book of policies is my total expected death strain minus my actual death strain. Mortality profit is a very helpful question for an examiner to put in an exam because in order to calculate your mortality profit, you need to go ahead and calculate your expected death strain and your actual death strain, which means that you have to go and calculate death strain at risk, which means you have to go and calculate reserves at time t plus one, which means that in order to calculate reserves, you probably also have to calculate premiums. Okay, so it can be a very lengthy question that tests a lot of concepts. And so it's useful for you to know how to do mortality profit calculations. Okay, this is, is very useful. I can almost guarantee that it'll come up in your exam. Okay, now let's move on to the more specific cases of death strain at risk. So my death strain at risk when a death benefit is payable immediately on death. So here when death benefit payable immediately on death, then my death strain at risk will be equal to S times by 1 plus I to the half minus T plus 1 V. So why is that? Well, 
because my death strain at risk is the amount that he's going to have to cough up extra at in terms of the time value of money at the end of the year and so if he's paid immediately in advance immediately um, on death then using the claims acceleration approach i would expect this payment to happen halfway through the year but if i'm working in terms of time value of money at the end of the year i have to future value that sum assured amount to the end of the year by half a year's worth of interest okay which is why i multiply it by this factor okay another special case is when there's also a survival benefit okay so So when there's a survival benefit too, then my death strain at risk will be equal to S minus T plus 1V plus R, when R is my survival benefit. Okay, so why does this make sense? Well, death strain at risk is still interpreted in the same way. It's this amount that the insurer is going to have to pay above what he otherwise would have had to pay or set aside if this person survived to the end of the year. And if they survive to the end of the year, the outflow is this T plus 1V plus R. Now I say outflow very loosely because the reserves that we set aside at the beginning of each year is an outflow in that we're setting it aside, but it's not really an outflow in the sense that we still keep this money, okay? But we're gonna loosely refer to it as an outflow. And then also the amount that you would have to pay at the end of this year or at the beginning of the next year is the survival benefit R, okay? So if there's also a survival benefit, then it's the death benefit minus this amount. So it's the, the amount that he'd have to pay above what he would have had to set aside or above the outflow if this person were to live. Okay, now this is the specific scenario where your death strain at risk, or at least one of the specific scenarios where your death strain at risk can be negative. So that's when you have a pure endowment. So if you have a pure endowment, then your death strain at risk, so by the way, pure endowment, you should know this by now, but a pure endowment is a benefit that will be paid on survival to a certain date. Okay, so if this person survives to the end of this year and they're expecting to be paid out, then it's zero minus T plus one V, okay because the sum assured then is zero if I'm only dealing with a pure endowment, okay? Likewise, if I have an endowment policy, then at, and I'm in this final year of the policy, so where there's either going to be a term assurance payout if the person dies in this final year, or there's gonna be a survival benefit payout if this person lives to the end of the year, then we look at this formula here, and if the, survival benefit r the pure endowment is equal to the term assurance benefit then this s and this r will just cancel and i'll be left with this negative t plus 1v which is very similar to this pure endowment here okay so that's pretty much it well that's pretty much everything that i wanted to say about your mortality profits um everything that i've said in this video is useful in order to know how to answer questions and in order to have all the information that you need but it is very important that you go and yourself and actually practice these questions because they can make them more complicated and mix them in with other sections such as harder to calculate reserves or such as you have to read very carefully to figure out how many people die within the year or you have to find out the amount of people that are alive at the end of the year for example they might say something like there's a certain number of people that are alive at time t plus one and a certain number of people died in the year now then to calculate the actual death strain you need the amount of people that died in the year which they've given to you but then to calculate the expected death strain you need the total number of policyholders that had a policy at the beginning of the year which you were not given but which you were given indirectly because you were given the number of policies that were enforced at the end of the year and the number of policyholders that died in the year, which means you can work backwards to calculate 
the policies in force at the beginning of the year. So they can make this complicated with wording, but if you just know exactly what you need and then use whatever information you've given to manipulate it into what you need, then you will be fine. But just, yeah, just practice a lot of questions for this section. And it's very useful to practice questions because it covers so many different sections in one. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.